What's up everyone, Pete Coco here, and in today's video, I am reviewing the Westcott Lindsay Adler Optical Spot. Now, although this might look like some kind of prop from the original Star Trek series, I assure you it is not. It's actually a very cool device that you can use to create some light effects, and I'm gonna show you in this video what it is, what it does, and why you might wanna pick one up for yourself, and I'll show you some of the cool images I've created with it. So let's get right to it. Before we get started, don't forget to subscribe to my channel, gently press that like button if you so desire, and if you wanna see my latest videos, make sure that you hit the notification bell. So what is this? Well, let's talk about what it's not first. This is not a flash. It does not come with a flash. This is a modifier that you put on a flash. So you need to have a flash already if you wanna use one of these. Depending on the flash system you use, you can get all kinds of different mounts for it. I have Alien Bees flashes in my studio, so I picked up this really well-made adapter ring on Amazon. And it basically goes from a Bowens mount to an Alien Bees, and now I can use it on my flashes. It comes with a lens. Now the lens goes on the front of here, just like you'd mount the lens to your camera, snaps in, and the lens is what allows you to focus the light at different distances. When I looked at this lens and lens cap at first, I said to myself, by golly, by gee, that looks like a Canon lens mount, and sure enough it is. So if you use Canon cameras like me, you can put any of your Canon lenses on here, which I haven't tried yet, but I will at some point, and I bet it's gonna be cool. So keep that in mind. Okay, so besides the lens, you get this, which is a gobo holder, and I'm gonna explain that in a second. And then you get a plethora of shapes. You got a heart, star, lines, different thickness lines, variety of little circles from small to large, and a window frame. Now it also comes with a filter holder and some filters that you can put on the front of this lens. Okay, so we call this a gobo because it's a go-between. It means it goes between your flash and your subject to create special patterns of light. So what you do, it's quite simple. You take one of these filters, uh, one of these gobos I should say, you slide it into this holder, and then there's a space on the spot itself and you slide this whole device in there which is a little tricky i'm not gonna lie you got to make sure you get it into the right spot there we go and now if you look i don't know if you can see that but you can you can see now that i have now a window shape inside of here so now when i put this on my flash and fire the flash it's going to project a window shape of light so you take these, you have a bunch of these different shapes. It's really cool. You can create all these different patterns, but there's something else in here that's super cool too. So let me take this lens off and show you that real quick. You have shutters already built into the optical spot. They do not come off, they're built in. And what you can do with these, which is really, really cool, is you can create all kinds of shapes of light. So like I can create strips like a little if i want like a single line of light across someone's face which i'll do that kind of thing if i want a triangle if i want some, sort of a strange different kind of shape and these these little shutters stay attached they don't come out if you open them all the way obviously it's it's a circle you can use your other uh, gobos okay so now i have one of my alien beast flashes here and this is just a standard old school alien bees i've had it for a number of years and what you do is you take this and you basically mount it onto there. So the problem with this, um, kind of twofold. The first problem is you really need to use the modeling light so that you can see what the light is doing and so that you can see how the shape is gonna be. If you just try and set it while you're taking pictures, you're just gonna be there forever because, uh, you know, you're gonna have to be firing and then adjusting, firing and adjusting. So if you're gonna use one of these, you gotta have a flash that has a modeling light. These flashes don't have a great modeling light. So that's my first sort of struggle with this when I use it, is that I have to kind of shut off all the rest of the lights, set this up first, and make sure it's focused, make sure it's at the level I want it as far as the power setting, and then I continue. That's annoying, it's not the most 
easy way to do it. Um, here's the other thing. When you have that modeling line, light on for an extended period, this thing gets hot as a you know what. You gotta be careful there. And what I'm gonna start doing, cause someone told me that maybe they melt. I don't know, someone in the comments can let me know if that's a thing. I haven't, I haven't had that problem, thankfully. But I'll tell you, this thing gets so hot that if you touch it while you have the modeling light on for a long time, you're like, wow, okay, that's not good. Uh, so be careful with that if you're using a flash or the modeling light. Next time I use it, I'm gonna make sure I shut it off in between taking shots, give it a little bit of rest time. So other than that, it's pretty cool. I'm really enjoying using it. It works very well. It does what it's supposed to do. You can create basically endless effects with it. What I would recommend and what I'm going to do because this is something I have to do anyway is eventually I'm going to upgrade and probably go with some other continuous lights that I can use with these modifiers because I'm using a Westcott flex kit for all my headshots and for most of my portrait work, but I wanna get some continuous lights that I can use this with. Let's talk about the quality for a second. I won't spend too much time on this, but as is always the case with Westcott, everything is made extremely well. They give you this awesome case too, which is a nice touch. And it's got all the space you need to store everything. It's a really good, well-made item. What I will say, which is not a mystery to anyone who has any Westcott products, you're going to spend a pretty penny on it. So this, item is about $500 by itself. It's not cheap. So I guess the question at this point is, do you need one? Should you buy one? If you're doing fashion, if you're doing artists and that sort of thing, this is something that can be very good to have because artists, musicians, um, fashion work, you can get that little bit of extra creativity. It's gonna be awesome. People will dig it. If you're shooting corporate headshots, your, your realtor is not gonna want an Ace Freely star across the front of their face, most likely. I can guarantee you on that one, actually. So if you're taking realtors and this sort of thing, you don't need this. If you wanna be creative, you wanna explore light, and you wanna kind of push yourself to a new level, then it's an awesome option to have. That's what I've been doing with it. I love it and I'm really interested to continue playing with it. I don't think I've cracked the surface really of with what you can do creatively with this as far as creating interesting patterns and shapes and also just dividing the light up in your frame in a way that gives it that extra sort of artistic look or whatever you want to call it. All right, so that's all I have for you today. I hope that you enjoyed this review, that you learned something from it, that it was helpful if you're looking at purchasing one of these. As usual, make sure you subscribe to my channel, hit that like button, leave me a comment, and uh, let me know what you thought about this video. And I will see you next time. So everyone go out, have a great day with your camera, and I'll see you later. Bye everyone.